Hello, everybody. This is Layla Sun, and welcome to my presentation on the five steps to healing Lyme for empaths. For those of you who don't know, I'm a holistic Lyme empowerment coach for empaths. So I'm really excited to be here, and more so, I'm excited to share everything that I've learned about these five steps with you today. And it is my intention and my sincerest hope that some of these steps will really empower you to realize what's missing in your pro present protocol in treating Lyme and really help you out here. So a little bit about me. I had Lyme for most of my life, um, probably since I was the age of 12 up and through my late 40s. Um, I experienced tremendous uh, fatigue pain, migraines, brain fog, probably for most of my life and just compensated for it. I, I didn't know what to do. I was taken to all, all these very different specialists. Uh, my father had worked at Harvard at the time and so I was taken to some of the best. I was definitely gaslighted by the best doctors out there. I was told it was all in my head. There was no diagnosis. I did grow up in the Northeast Corridor and um, today that means nothing. You know, 20, 30 years ago, that meant a lot. That's where it, they say that it started. And now we know that it is a worldwide epidemic. And Dr. Klinghart will state that underneath almost all autoimmune diseases and chronic degenerative diseases is the Lyme bacteria. So it's a really big one, as you all know. I'm very familiar with the pain and the suffering that this disease causes, and um, I'm here for you. It is my, my mission in life to support and coach people with Lyme, to empower them and to transform their health and their life. Um, part of having Lyme for most of my life and trying to understand what was going on with me during that, um, it inspired me and motivated me to get trained in a myriad of different healing modalities. I'm not gonna go into all those um, modalities that I got into, but I have multiple uh, certificates, workshops, classes in alternative ways of looking at medicine and disease, not only from the physical, but uh, the mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic ways of looking at diseases. A part of my integrating those um, different modalities I chose to open uh, two health and wellness centers and two different herb stores, which I, I really, really loved. I opened probably both of my herb stores in New Mexico. They were Botanica del Sol and Dancing Turtle Herbals. Those were two herb and vitamin shops. And I was still really sick then, not really sure what was going on at that point. But uh, my passion has always been alternative medicine. So, you know, it gave me hope to be able to have that store and help other people while still trying to figure out what's going on with myself. And then I went on to open two health and wellness centers here in Colorado, Sun Health and Wellness, and um, learned a whole lot from clients, finally got diagnosed and treated. And um, it was, a, you know, as you know, it was a big deal. So that's a little bit about me. Another piece about me that I think is really, really important to know is that I am an intuitive. I am an empath. I was born knowing things. I was born also, as a medium, there came a point in time in my practice where every single client who got on my table who had a, a loved one who had recently passed would come through and, and give me a message for my clients. And um, while that was often tremendously liberating for my clients, um, it was a little overwhelming for me, and I very consciously chose not to continue to cultivate that piece of my ability um, but I do absolutely use the rest of my intuition um, and discovering and honoring and embracing my intuition has also been a big part of my healing and is a huge part of who I am. So about Lyme disease, as most of you know, this is an incredibly complex, insidious and multi-layer disease. Um, they say that treating cancer, depending on the kind of cancer you have, is almost easier than uh, recovering from this disease if there is such a thing as um, recovering. And that's a whole other topic that I don't want to get into here, but it's a big one. I do personally believe that you can recover from the bacterial pieces, but since it is such a multi-layered disease, recovery is a, is a pretty broad, strong term. So, And it's different for everyone, but it's usually symptom-based that you can tell if you've recovered or not. Um, as you know, the layers of this disease, you know, Lyme just isn't a bacteria. Underlying that bacteria is almost always Epstein-Barr uh, Epstein virus, HHV6, CMV. 
uh, yeast, fungus, uh, mold. As you know, there's a mold epidemic going on with all the natural disasters happening, all the flooding that's going on. Um, you always want to treat mold first before you even go after the bacteria from the Lyme. And then there's the issues of parasites that a lot of people don't even talk about. And if you're an empath, I want you to understand that parasites just aren't on the physical level. We're talking about energetic and uh, parasites, vampire um, parasites, the type of parasites that drain you energetically. When you're an empath and you're wide open and you're sweet and you have a generous heart, you have no protection. You don't have very strong boundaries. And so these parasites are able to come in and take advantage of your physical body, let alone mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and energetically. So, um, you know, parasites, again, isn't just the physical. That's a metaphor for a lot of different things going on in people's lives, especially, again, when you're an empath. So take heed of that, listen to that, think about that, and see how it applies to your life. Um, some of the other layers of this disease that you have to deal with are chemicals, heavy metals, oops, and chemicals. Again, little typo there, bear with me. And as you know, you know, you need to absolutely be treated physically. But what I found is if you want to sustain and maintain your healing, we're not just a physical body. We have a mental body composed of our thoughts. We have an emotional body composed of our feelings. We have a spiritual body composed of our connection to unconditional love and faith and trust. And we have an energetic body that's very sensitive to everything around it that needs to be very wisely taken care of. So again, it's very frustrating for me when clients come in and they see some of the best doctors who only treat them physically. Um, we, are, we are made up of so much more than just our physical bodies. Um, and that's one of the things I, I probably specialize in. And that's one of the things that I think empaths really, really tend to understand and get. Uh, one of the things I also discovered uh, working with clients, uh, you know, a session with me typically goes in person about an hour of coaching. And then I put you on the massage table and I do raindrop therapy, which is a form of massage using essential oils along your spine and the soles of your feet with hot, wet towels. And then after I get your nervous system settled, then I literally start doing some energy work and I start dialoguing with the microbes. They do tend to like to hang out along the spine and different areas in the body. And I start talking with them and I start asking them to leave. And um, they get aggravated. Sometimes they get pissed off. Sometimes they throw a tantrum. Sometimes they whine. It's very, very interesting. What I want you to understand and know is that microbes have a life force and, those, and that life force wants to live. It doesn't want to die. And so a lot of times clients just feel like um, they blame themselves. They, they, have a, they feel or think that they have all this resistance to getting better. And what I want to tell them is, you know, there's probably some self-sabotage and some psychological issues that keep you from wanting to get better that you might um, used to resist treatment on some level, yet I want you to know that there's also the life force of the microbes who have taken up um, uh, uh, their home, who have made your, their home in your body, and they don't want to leave. They're happy there. They're content there. They found a nice acidic place to live. Um, your emotions are probably down. Your thoughts are probably down, and this is a great place for them to really take advantage of someone and, and hang out. Uh, so really, really think about that. And so that's one of the pieces I, I really found that is very helpful to deal with is to start almost respecting these microbes, respecting that they have a life force and working with different ways of releasing them from your system. And that's something I'll talk about in a lot more depth in the mastermind program that I have created to, that goes more in depth about all these different five steps because it truly is a fascinating topic. And I think it does have a lot of relevance to healing. So step one, your detox pathways, open detox pathways and introducing antimicrobials. You know, your detox pathways are simply how your body removes toxic substances, right? Your main detox organs are your liver and your kidneys, then your skin and your lungs, and your bowels and urinary tract are extensions of this. So 
If you start killing off microbes and your liver, kidneys, bowels, and urinary tract are not functioning properly, you're going to herx and what's called auto-intoxicate. And when you do that, you're going to feel awful. And when you feel awful, you're probably then not going to be um, inspired to try or take on anything new. You're going to be too scared to start any new products. I'd love to have a show of hands of how many people have, have done that here. I'm sure there are many, and I hear about it from clients all the time. They're terrified to try something new. And that's because, again, their organs aren't able to move out the toxins quick enough. And when you take antimicrobials, you cause die off and then you feel lousy. So that is why step number one for me is absolutely make sure that your detox pathways are open first. Um, probably the very first place that I like to start is using a colon cleanse. Uh, my favorite colon cleanse would be Oxy Powder. You can go to oxypowder.com online and you can check out that product. They'll give you a lot more information there. It is a non-habit forming, um, non-griping, non-addictive herbal laxative essentially. And it's absolutely critical if you're not having at least one to three bowel movements a day. So no doing anything else till you get those bowels working at least one, one to three times a day. Um, some of the other ways to open up your detox pathways would be taking homeopathic drainage formulas and herbal drainage formulas. There is a lot of really great brands out there. Um, you can do some research on your own. I will get into more in depth on uh, and share links and my favorite product lines. A lot of them are practitioner only and some of them are not. The other way, not necessarily to open detox pathways, but to get detox pathways moving would be uh, the use of minerals. And if any of you work with me, you're gonna know that minerals, 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 that's my mantra. If you don't have enough minerals in your system, you don't have the ability to carry out the toxins. When you don't have enough minerals and you can't carry out the toxins, you're gonna hurt. When you hurt, you're gonna feel awful and you're not gonna wanna detox, right? So, always get those minerals in there two to three times a day at least and there's a lot of different types of minerals i'll talk about and different ways to take them and times where you really absolutely need to use them more than others and indicators of when you really need to use them so minerals are really really key and important to open detox pathways to make sure you're moving all the toxic sludge out of your system Another favorite way to keep everything open is the infrared sauna. My beloved infrared sauna, I don't know what I'd do without it. It moves out mercury, cadmium, lead, arsenic, um, increases immune function, cardiovascular function, um, increases dopamine, increases endorphins, helps you sleep at night, helps move out all the emotional gunk as empaths that you've taken on throughout the day that's stored in your cells and moves it out through your skin and, um, through your organs. It's a fabulous way to really keep things open and moving. I can't highly recommend it enough. So once you open up your detox pathways, it is absolutely time to uh, introduce antimicrobials. And when I say antimicrobials, I'm talking antivirals, antibacterials, antiparasites, antimycotoxins. We want to treat for, for all of those. <clears throat> Um, the way I like to do that is by using some really nice broad spectrum antimicrobials. And I like to use really gentle ones. And the gentle ones I think of are probably um, Chinese herbs, they're building. And a lot of them tend to be immunomodulators. Immunomodulators are going to balance your immune system essentially. So if it's too high, it's going to bring it down. And if your immune system's too low, it's going to bring it up. It's a really beautiful way to start to introduce your immune system to really gentle and balancing herbs. And I'll talk more in depth about some of those herbs um, at, a, at the Mastermind program. Another really great way to introduce antimicrobials to the system, again, that's very gentle, is the use of homeopathics. Um, and again, I, I do like to use Desbio. And de while Desbio has a, a kit for Borrelia, Babesia, Bartonella, et cetera, I'm talking about maybe their 
they have some single formulas called Virus Plus, Bacteria Plus, Epstein-Barr Virus Plus. And that's kind of where I prefer to start with a lot of people. I will use my intuition to figure out um, what they need, but that's a great starting point. Again, just to get the immune system used to um, moving these things out. You know, healing from Lyme is really about peeling off the layers, and it depends on how quickly you want to go. And if you're an empath, and you go too quick, you're going to shut down your nervous system. And once your nervous system shuts down and pass, um, the healing's going to shut down. Everything's going to stop until you feel safe. So let's go really, really slow. Let's take things gently. And the minute your nervous system freaks out, I want you to slow down and stop everything. So gentle um, and consistent are my other mantras as well. You know, another antimicrobial, specifically antiviral, that's just absolutely critical for everybody is vitamin C. And my favorite way to get the vitamin C in there is through liposomal vitamin C at least twice a day. And I have a couple other favorites as well that I will share at another time that I'm really excited about. So please, you know, get some Chinese herbs in there that are gentle, find some homeopathics that are gentle. When I talk about homeopathics, I'm not talking about classical formulas such as the Leadum. I'm talking about homeopathic blends specific for um, particular viruses and bacteria. And again, I'm talking about not necessarily using homeopathics for the Lyme bacteria, but slowly peeling off the layers gently, going after, you know, the myriad of layers of viruses and bacteria that are already there underlying the actual Borrelia. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, a lot of information here. So after you open your detox pathways and we get some antimicrobials and you're feeling better, you know, this is really the time that I want you to start using nutrition, focus on your gut health, focus on building your endocrine and your nervous system. And again, I'm just going to focus on a, a few of my favorite ways to do this. I'm not going to get too in-depth. A lot of you know about these. Some of you don't. Um, and there'll, there'll be time for Q&A at the end here if you'd like. So nutrition, what I want to say about nutrition is at this point, your system's depleted, you're mineral deficient, you're vitamin deficient, you're probably deficient in fats, amino acids, and you are not what you are eat, you are what you assimilate. And the easiest way to bring nutrients into the system and assimilate them is through liquids, through broths, because it bypasses the GI essentially, and you automatically absorb it right in. So one of the ways I like to do that is by having you make a potassium broth. And if you don't have histamine issues, if you can add a little miso, which is a fermented soybean, which binds with heavy metals, especially radiation, and sea vegetables, which provide a lot of minerals and also bind with radiation. Another way to get that liquid nutrition into your system is through smoothies. And by smoothies, I mean fruit, and by green drinks, I mean using primarily a base of vegetables. Um, really great way to fortify your whole body with the vitamins it needs to feed your organs so that they can rebuild. So the next up would be gut health. And as most of you know, you know, the two primary absolute must haves in terms of just the beginning of starting to rebuild your gut. And I will totally talk about this more again is the use of probiotics. There's so many different kinds out there. There's so many different ways to use it. There's food based, there's supplement based, etc. And the same with enzymes. What I find with a lot of clients is they will take the probiotics, but maybe not the enzymes. Or since they're perfectionists and they, you know, forgot to take the enzymes before the meal and it's after the meal, they don't want to do it. So I'm just here to tell you, take your probiotics and enzymes at least two to three times a day. And you know what? I don't care if you don't do it perfectly right. If, if you forget to take it before a meal, just get it in your system, please really, really big. The other piece I want to talk about briefly and touch on regarding gut health is that as empaths, when we take on other people's stuff, empaths tend to take it on either in the solar plexus, which would be the gut, or neck and shoulders. So let's just focus on the solar plexus here for a moment. Um, and know that if that is the place where you tend to take on other people's stuff and their stress, 
excuse me, I think I need to get a drink of water. Um, it's gonna cause that whole area to shut down. So yeah, you might have leaky gut syndrome, you probably have digestive issues, but no, as an empath, again, when you take on other people's emotions in your solar plexus, it directly affects your gut's ability to digest because that stress literally shuts down um, and contracts your two miles full of small and large intestines and keeps things from flowing, keeps things from moving when you contract. So one of the simplest, easiest ways to start moving that solar plexus and getting it open is through lying down and really doing some deep breath work, focusing on that solar plexus area. You can also use color and sound that is tied into that chakra as well. So really, really important. The other thing too is, you know, we get information from our head, our heart, and our gut. And when we don't listen and we don't, as empaths, we don't trust our gut, we can get ourselves into trouble. Meaning our gut has a brain. It has a wisdom of its own. And if you don't listen to it, there can be repercussions because it's one of the places where we gain a lot of our wisdom and insight from. So it's really, really always important to trust your gut instinct about things. The other metaphor for the gut is, what is it in your life that you can't digest? What is it in your life that you can't stomach? So those again are things that I'll talk about some more um, during the Q&A and during the Mastermind program. I love getting into that piece. Um, the endocrine system, I think of, you know, the endocrine system, of course, is big, but I tend to focus on probably adrenals and thyroid primarily, maybe a little pituitary hypothalamus part. The first thing I want you to know again is empath, since you are highly sensitive and intuitive, is that, um, and maybe a lot of you didn't know this, but your endocrine system is your chakra system, and each one of your chakras is um, a gland. So really, really important to look at what, what glands and chakras uh, need support, and not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and energetically. You know, you might be calling for different colors, for different sounds, for different foods, etc. But on the physical level, regarding the endocrine system, the first way I like to absolutely um, support the adrenals and thyroid is probably by starting a glandular. And then moving into vitamins. And there are specific vitamins. For instance, the thyroid needs iodine, it needs selenium, it needs zinc, it needs tyrosine and B-complex. Um, the adrenals needs B5, B6, B12, magnesium, and vitamin C. So you can see here the importance of nutrition to be able to feed all your organs and glands and all the different systems uh, going on in your body. Really, really big. So as, let's move right into the nervous system here. As an empath, your nervous system is the interface to the world, which means if your nervous system is frazzled, your healing is going to shut down. You're, you're going to go into stasis, and you're not going to really be able to move forward because when your nervous system goes, that means you don't feel safe. And when you don't feel safe, you can't heal, okay? So on the, it's really important to stabilize your nervous system, by the way, when you get to that that place of feeling uh, scared, stuck, um, your vagus nerve is, is not uh, moving properly. So let's just talk a little bit and touch on how to support the nervous system on the physical level. And again, here's my mineral mantra, absolutely best way hands down to feed your nervous system is through the use of minerals, broad spectrum minerals, ionic minerals, folic, humic, there's, again, there's so many different kinds. And the bees, all of the bees, the bee complexes, please find yourself a really nice bee complex liquid and start taking it throughout your day. There's a lot of different foods. There's a lot of different herbs and supplements out there that are high in bee complex. And there's a lot of different minerals that are, a lot of different foods and herbs that are higher in minerals as well. So when I cover this, we'll get into food sources, herb sources, Chinese herb sources, um, and we'll definitely get into the empathic piece of the nervous system and how to use different energy medicine techniques to settle your nervous system. 
The other way to feed the nervous system is by using herbs. The really nice thing about herbs is that, and, and these days, is that there's a lot of different herbal formulas and blends in the form of tinctures out there that you can be taking on an ongoing basis. And there's a lot of different tea blends, uh, tea bag blends out there specifically for nervous system that you can drink first thing in the morning before you go to bed. So really, really easy to get out there. I think the tricky part for most people is to be disciplined enough to take care of their bodies and make it a priority to do this. Um, because empaths tend to feel like a victim a lot. They tend to forget to connect to spirit and they give a lot of their energy away to people all day. So by the time it comes to them, they're wiped out and they're drained. So as an empath, really, really important to make the nutrition, the gut health, the endocrine system, and nervous system health a priority. Please do. Empaths, you're all such beautiful people. Okay, so step number three. Uh, this is a really big one for a lot of people, and a lot of people don't like to deal with this one. Um, I can tell you over and over again, when I get to this piece with clients, they kind of check out. It's just one more thing they don't want to deal with, and it's yet it's so, so incredibly important. I'm going to actually start with um, dental infections. And so step three is invisible environmental toxins. So like I said earlier, um, Lyme is a complex, insidious, and multi-layered disease. And one of the layers is made up of heavy metals and chemicals in the system. So it's really important that you know where these are coming from so that you can mitigate them and reduce your exposure to them. Uh, the first one I want to talk about again is dental infection and jaw infection. A jaw infection is also known as a cavitation. It's an invisible infection in your jaw that's very hard to detect um, unless you use a specific type of scan. Um, and there's a different type of machine that you can have checked, have it looked at by as well, sorry. Um, so I want you to make sure that you don't have any cavitations or jaw infections. And I want you to make sure you don't have any dental infections um, such as a root canal. So I guess what I want to say is uh, about nine months ago, I was just getting sicker and sicker and sicker, and I didn't know what was going on, and I was taking everything I could. And long story short, I had a dental infection that nobody could see on an x-ray, on the scan. I knew it intuitively because of the symptoms that I had. I went through two surgeons. They refused to extract the tooth. I went through two biological dentists, finally found one that would pull the tooth. She rolled her eyes at me. Look, looked at me like I had three eyes um, and she saw the tiniest of a hairline something or other on the x-ray and said okay I'll do it and she extracted the tooth and was shocked at the amount of infection in there. I was tremendously relieved um, that it was done. She cleaned it out with ozone and it had done quite a bit of damage um, I think to my jawbone and to my sinus area and it took me about three months to bring the infection down, I'm all better now. But I just wanna say, if you have that ongoing infection in your mouth as a part of your, uh, your oral health, it is absolutely one of the first things that you have to take care of and look at next to mold and then Lyme, okay? Oral health is absolutely key. If you have any root canals, please get them removed and cleaned out properly. And again, We'll talk more about that later and go into depth at another time. But number one thing, I'm very, very passionate about it, especially because I just went through it and it was truly hell. It took a toll on my self-esteem and my ability as a practitioner. I couldn't figure out what was going on with me. Nobody else could. And um, it was also very empowering because I really learned to trust my gut regardless of all the money I spent and all the people and professionals I went to see who told me, you're fine, there's nothing wrong with you, you don't have any infection, I knew it. So the key for you empaths is we're really intuitive people, listen to your gut and always trust it. Okay, so the next one I wanna launch into is EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies and radio frequencies. These are both invisible, harmful rays of radiation we're exposed to on a daily basis. Uh, this 5G coming out is cancer causing, that means it is carcinogenic. It reduces your um, immune system response and it attacks your gut micro, 
gut microbiome. So there are all of us walking around with leaky gut syndrome, doing everything we can to heal the gut, and we're not realizing that our exposure to Wi-Fi via um, your computer, cell phone, tablets, et cetera, modems are really taking a toll on your gut's ability to heal. So really, really important that you reduce your exposure. Um, regarding mold, please, as most of you know, dental first, mold next, then Lyme. Have your house tested and get it mitigated. If you need to move and sell, please move and sell. I have clients in the UK and several, one recently who's just moved into a cargo van who need to get away from any houses at this point. Their immune system is so shut down from the mold. They just need a break. It's a really uh, huge epidemic. It's affecting tons of people and it's a big one that you need to get on right away. Please don't um, underestimate the effect that it has on your immune system. Those mycotoxins can be uh, really, really tough. Of course, make sure your home doesn't have radon. And I'm just gonna be really quick about the plastic. The plastics are endocrine disruptors. An endocrine disruptor is something that comes in and keeps your endocrine system, which is your glandular system, from working. Um, and we don't want that. Just don't bring plastic into your home. Drink, drink out of plastic cups. Don't use plastic plates. Don't use plastic spoons. Only, only use stuff that's BPA-free. Plastic bags is a whole other story. If you have to bring those in, I do. Go ahead. When you're at the supermarket, make sure you use cloth bags, etc. cetera. Be, um, plastic is a, a huge endocrine disruptor and a whole lot more. Just please be conscious of and wary of bringing that into your house and reduce your usage of it to the best of your ability. Uh, house cleaning and body care products. The first thing I ask for all of you is to make sure they're not tested on animals. That's the first question I ask anywhere I go for any of these products. And I always look for the little insignia on the side of the bottle as well. Make sure they are green, um, they're eco-conscious products. Make sure there's a very limited ingredient list that you're looking at, whether these are house cleaning or body care products. Please make sure you buy organic um, pads or tampons. They've been known to have gly glyphosate in them. Um, you know, right now it's really easy to buy green products and frankly all I use is white vinegar in a spray bottle with some dish unscented natural uh, dish, dish liquid detergent or liquid and then I use something called Bonami, B-O-N-A-M-I, it's essentially a cleanser without bleach and then I use non-chlorine bleach and that's all I need people. I don't even buy all the seventh generation or other brand stuff for cleansing. I find that I just don't need it. Do your research, vinegar kills 99% of what it comes into contact with and I've been very happy using it. Regarding um, body care products, please uh, buy locally. Again, the ingredient list shouldn't be more than five or 10 ingredients on there. Check out your local companies. There's so many wonderful um, women entrepreneurs making their own products and or make your own really, really easy to do. Um, and I'm gonna share my favorite recipe for my goddess face and body cream that I make and other, a few other uh, great recipes for skincare toners, lotion, and some anti-inflammatory oils that I make as well. So I'm really excited to share that. Okay, step number three, that's a lot of information to take in there, but but and super, super important that you know all those pieces so that you can't reduce your exposure to toxins. Okay, so step number four is, you know, as an empath, how does trauma and PTSD affect your ability to heal? Trust me, uh, trauma causes constant negative feelings such as loss, fear, anxiety, sadness, guilt, grief, abandonment, and a whole lot more. Um, trauma also causes the vagus nerve, and it's a nerve that runs the length of our brainstem and contains the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, of which you need both of these nervous systems to work together in order for your body's organs to find, to um, fight and combat illness, as well as stay cool, calm, and connected. So when your body can't fight illness and you can't stay cool, calm, and collected, you know, you need to start doing some work on the vagus nerve and that tracks back to trauma work. 
when your nervous system is under constant fight or flight from trauma response or just from being an empath and taking on other people's stuff, it keeps your body from being able to heal. Plain and simple. So one of the ways to bring a nervous system on overdrive from trauma and PTSD so it can be healthy again is, you know, counseling, EMDR, um, tapping or emotional freedom technique, breath work. Uh, for some people, it's soothing music. For some people, it's water in the form of showers, baths. For some people, it's a heavy blanket or grabbing onto a towel. It's, it's really different for each person. It depends on the level of trauma and the amount of stress. And it's really, really important that you have in your toolkit at least one to five different ways to self-soothe yourself, to bring your nervous system down out of overdrive and help it find that calm, peaceful place again. For me, I like to smudge and probably use music take lots of magnesium baths and hide out in my sanctuary is probably a how I do it. And I know it's different for different people. Um, I have clients who have very specific ways of really settling their nervous system from their familial and ancestral trauma and the PTSD that comes with that. So as an empath, Oftentimes you're born into your family or you're contracted to come into your family because you are the quote lightning rod for your maternal and paternal ancestral stories. And with those stories comes stress. And with that stress often comes trauma and PTSD. So what that means is not only are you working on clearing your own trauma from this lifetime, you often have chosen or unconsciously have taken on your maternal and paternal trauma as well. And if you're an empath, there's such a thing as the collective. And the collective is the energy that the whole planet is going through based on all the information that we're being told through the news. So if there's a natural disaster or a tragedy that's going on that affects the world and you're listening to the news and the radio, there's a good chance that if you're not careful and if you're not protected, that you're taking on a lot of the fear that's in the ethers, a lot of the anxiety, and the sadness that's in the ethers. I often like to share a story. A couple months ago, I was in the kitchen and putzing around, making dinner, and I was happy. And all of a sudden, this sadness just completely washed over me and I thought oh my gosh I just need to cry and so I tried to cry to release whatever it was and I cried a little but it didn't help at all and I was really perplexed I thought what's going on what, what's happening here I was really baffled because I scanned and I tracked everything going on in my life and I thought there's nothing I'm sad about what where did this come from a couple minutes later, I got on the computer and my dear friend emailed me and she said, did you just have all the sadness wash over you about five minutes ago? And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. And then I spoke to another, my massage therapist a couple hours later and he said, you know, around three o'clock, he said, I was just crying out of the blue. I don't even know where it came from. So that is an example of the collective sadness that's out there that as empaths, we really need to be careful not to take on. And if we do feel it, it's super important to have the tools to track and take inventory and to know how you're feeling so that when other feelings pop into your field, you're aware of whether they are yours or not. Really, really big piece there for empaths to learn and understand. It can be tremendously empowering to know that sometimes your anxiety and your sadness or your grief is not always yours. It can be from a conversation you just had with someone. It could be from a store that you just walked into and someone you walked by who was going through a lot. It could be from the planet. And of course, it can be yours as well. So take inventory and track what's yours and always protect yourself, okay? Empaths, you're so tender and wonderful and lovable and have such big hearts, but setting boundaries healthy energetic boundaries is absolutely key for you. 
Okay, so step number five, how being an empath affects your ability to heal. Empaths, you know, you easily and often unconsciously tap into other people's energy. You naturally know how they're feeling. This overloads your energy field. It reduces your immune response, your adrenal function. It makes you stressed, tired, and drained, right? You give all your energy away to everybody else. You prioritize everyone else's needs over yours. And when it comes time to taking care of you, um, you're exhausted and you're wiped out. And what I'm here to tell you is you do this in a very feminine, covert way, which means you don't consciously sit out and say, I'm going to take care of Sue's problem here and Joe's issues there and her uh, trauma there. You just automatically, it's called run other people's energy. You just do it for them. You've been doing it most of your life, so you're not even that conscious or aware that you're doing it. At least a lot of you are doing this, okay? It's exhausting. So most empaths experience chronic illness and health problems such as digestion and hormonal problems, migraines, low energy, depression, and anxiety because they don't know how, again, to set healthy energetic boundaries. Super, super important. And before we get into that, you know, I want you to know that empaths, like highly sensitives, only make up about 20% of the population. So if you feel lonely and isolated and misunderstood, I get it. I want you to have this perspective and know why, okay? As empaths and highly sensitives, and there is a subtle difference between the two, you are wired differently for most people. You make decisions differently, which a lot of people aren't gonna understand. Your nervous system is easily overstimulated by sounds, lights, noise, too many people, crowds. If you're not an empath, you can handle all those things and those, those things don't bother you. Um, you make taking care of others a priority. You know, the beautiful thing I want you to understand is you have abundant healing gifts. You know, feel, and sense how other people are feeling. And these are, these are gifts that 80% of the population simply does not have. Really, really important to understand what those gifts are because those gifts are here as, <laughs> how do I say this? Um, your gifts are your mission in life. That's why you're here to serve, okay? So the sooner you find out what your gifts are and why you're here to serve, the easier it is for you as an empath to take back your power and your, and your ability to serve. And I'm not sure that I said that in the best way, but I, I think you understand. All right, so as an empath, I want you to keep in mind it's of utmost important that you get grounded, you stay centered, and you use breath work. So you can't stay centered and take inventory of whose feelings you're feeling and what's coming into your energy field if you're not getting grounded. So get grounded, however you do that. You can use essential oils. You can use breath work. You can use music. I want you to clear yourself constantly. I want you to know what your emotions are, your stories are, and what energies are yours and what are not yours. And again, I want you to learn to track and witness what is around you. Most importantly, I want you always to stay connected to spirit, to source, to God as your guide to help you navigate your life and always ask for guidance. So again, learn how to stay anchored and rooted in your energy by being mindful of your body. Use breath work oils, and clear your chakras daily or as needed. And as needed means the minute you start to feel overwhelmed, anxious, drained, and fatigued, it's time to check in with your nervous system. It's time to take care of that empathic part of yourself, that energetic piece of you, and to include that and make it a priority as part of your, your daily hygiene. So there's daily hygiene for washing you know, your hair, brushing your teeth, et cetera. And if you're an empath, you have to integrate um, empath hygiene on a daily basis as well. And it just takes a little discipline to do that. Okay, love you empaths, you're awesome. Ah. So a couple of final thoughts. 
Uh, stabilize your physical body with antimicrobials and nutrient-dense food. If you're not stabilized physically, you're not going to be able to clear yourself, um, take care of your mental thoughts, and recreate your narrative. You're not going to be able to uh, do your emotional work, and you're not going to be able to clear yourself. And, of course, the next thing is clearing yourself. You have to clear yourself energetically from other people's thoughts and feelings. The same way you brush your teeth and wash your hair, I want you to clear yourself, whether you use oils, whether you take a shower, whether you smudge, whether you say a prayer, etc. Clear yourself daily and actually a couple times a day, depending on where your day takes you. Stay centered, grounded, and always aware of your surroundings. You can kind of go on autopilot and check out when you're in the safety of your own home, but the minute you go out that door, Empaths, I want you to be aware of your surroundings so that unwanted thoughts and feelings just don't energize, enter your energy field and, and you become overwhelmed, okay? And if you do become overwhelmed, you're grounded enough and centered enough to know, oh gosh, okay, that's not my stuff. So please have a mantra or a prayer as you go out through your day outside your front door so that you can um, stay aware. Uh, discover and develop your intuitive gifts. Again, most empaths are clairsentient, clairaudient, clairvoyant, etc. There's over 25 different clairs, and each and every one of you have several of these. These are your gifts, and these gifts are here to serve you, and they're here to serve those around you. Please learn what they are, embrace, and honor them. And then the last final thought is, Please prioritize taking care of you and your delicate nervous system. No, reshift your energy to focusing on everyone else and focus on making you the number one priority. And if you have any energy left over, then you can give it away to others. And even then, only if they ask, okay? Really important. Empaths are natural born codependents. They're spiritual codependents. They try to take away everyone else's pain. And in doing so, that codependency uh, becomes denying that other person's own lesson that they need to learn. So please don't take those lessons away from them. You can be there for them after they've learned them and they reach out for help. But please take a minute and step back. And just because you can doesn't mean you should reach out and give a hand. It's always best when someone asks you for their help. And I know that's challenging because empaths just automatically and naturally and easily know how to take care of other people's pain. But please step back and understand the ramifications of that. You are keeping them from learning a lesson that they need to learn. And you can be there for them when and once they, they need help processing that. Okay, so I was really excited about sharing these five steps and wanted to come up with a really affordable and easy way for you to integrate these steps into your life and to learn more about them. Uh, these are super important steps. And I've seen clients who've seen a lot of the best Lyme doctors, and I know these Lyme doctors don't include at least four of the steps. They only include one. And again, if you're an empath, um, you absolutely need to integrate the rest of these four steps into your life. So I created a mastermind to help you do that. So I created the uh, mastermind with Layla Sun, learn how being an empath directly impacts your ability to heal. And I don't want to be redundant here. Um, so what you receive is five 60 minute group sessions and one 60 minute private session. So for each Monday in October, I will cover each one of the steps in depth, in detail, providing you with favorite products and links to each one of the steps that we're talking about. And then during your private session, I'm gonna get into customizing. We're gonna look at what step's missing and we're gonna customize and figure out what it is that you need to do to um, integrate the five steps into your life and into your protocol so that you will heal quicker. So my offer to you is if you sign up in the next week, you will receive 20% off your purchase of the class. So I'm really excited. I have it valued at 250. I know it's valued at way more. And my special price if you sign up in the next week is a price of $210. That's less than $50 an hour. 
per class. So I'm really excited about offering this price to you. I really look forward to seeing you and hearing you on the PowerPoint presentation. If for some reason you can't be there, please know there will be a recording. We prefer that you're there, but if you can't be, we understand, or I understand. And again, no, this is a special, the special offer includes one 60 minute one-on-one -on -one phone consultation on how to apply the five steps to your life. So if you are an empath and you are struggling and you feel like you're not getting the results you want and need and you know something is missing and you know that some of these five steps have really resonated with you, then please feel free to contact me at my email address and let's get you signed up starting real soon. Okay. so. For those of you who want something more in depth, I offer a four month transform line online program. It's composed of eight 90 minute intensive sessions and unlimited emails. It's very in depth and I have to say, I probably notice changes in people between session number five and six, they really start to take off. It's a very exciting program. It's my premier program. And I have a couple other options that I'm happy to talk um, with you about as well. So my four month transform line online program, you can learn more by signing up for a free discovery session. I do the free discovery sessions because I don't want to work just with anyone. I want to work with someone who I really resonate with, who resonates with me, who's really interested in my perspective and what I have to offer. And I want us to really feel like my program's going to benefit you. It's really, really important that we do that. And so, um, this free dis discovery session is designed for me to get to know you more, find out what's working and what's not working, and to see if we think uh, the program and the program is a good fit. Um, and again, if you sign up in the next week, you will receive 20% off your purchase of the Transform Line program. That's a really great um, special. So if you've been wanting to take the four month line program for a while, you've been thinking about it, uh, this would be the time to take advantage of that special price. Okay, thanks everybody for joining. I love you empaths, I'm here for you. It is my mission in life to empower you to transform your health and your life. Have a beautiful day, I hope to hear from you soon. Um, you have to sign up no later than September 28th. You can PM me on Facebook. You can email me at sun, S-U-N, at laylasun.com. And I love phone calls. So, you know, I'm old fashioned that way. You can call me at 303-834-9003. I look forward to answering any of your questions. If, if you're reserved or unsure about anything, please feel free to check in with me and I'll get all those questions answered. I'm looking forward to a really awesome month of October and empowering you all to uh, reclaim your health and to reclaim your life. Love you all. Bye-bye.